Hey, Scott from Aristocob.com here. And Seth from TheShrinkingPastor.com. There. <laughs> Together, the three of us, it includes you, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. And welcome once again. Welcome, boy. Good morning. Good morning, Homer. Something is burning in this pot in front of us. It's probably the... Uh, the tobacco? It's probably the tobacco or the, uh, the rolling papers that we... You know, when, when poorly you, a few weeks ago, when, when you when you go to places and you're supposed to be uh, sampling wine or sampling coffee, they have the little cuspidor to spit into. That's basically our tobacco cuspidor right there. Yeah, I spit into it every time we. Film. Yeah, we could uh, we could put that in a in a bag and, and give it to my my son in law. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> what do they they call it? Um, in in uh. Uh, frat houses, they call it the King's Cup, I think. Is, oh, is the one that you, you dump, dump all the leftover beer into and someone drinks it at the end of the night. That's not right. Yeah. So, it, we, we, we wrapped up last week talking about that tobacco and uh, that that's the same stuff we smoked last week, isn't it? Yes. I'm concerned about a tobacco like that that's not going to seal well, so it needs to go in some other storage container. And that, my friends is a segue <laughs> for those of you who aren't in the know. When uh, we got done a couple weeks ago smoking the Lane 1Q it, uh, that, that we had had uh, cellared for five years, the thought occurred to me that I need a better way of sealing those than the way I had because about half of them had popped. And not that it was bad because again I wasn't going for necessarily an airtight seal, but why not? If you're going to store something for five years, don't you want an airtight seal? So I recalled a conversation I had with Chris Morgan of Morgan Pipes, who told me and showed me that he uses a food saver vacuum sealer for his tobacco. And so I did some research and looked around and I found that some of the food savers are available with the ability to, to uh, seal a couple different size mason jars. That, that same one will seal the Ziploc vacuum bags, the ones that have the little port on them. Mm -hmm. Ziploc for a time was selling a little a little thing to suck the air out of, of a specially made yeah. Ziploc bag. Yep. So anyway, uh, this was my very first thing sealed in my food saver. I, I, right off the bat I learned some lessons and Chris's advice to begin with was if you buy the bags you can cut them. Okay. Cut them when you go to seal them. So this is actually half of a bag that came as a pre-made bag. Um, I sealed the bottom of that opening, and then I was able to seal something else in that same bag. Um, you can also buy rolls of this, and Chris advised me that there is a brand on Amazon that is actually his preference over the Food Saver brand. So I bought a couple rolls of that, too. Hmm. But I, the other lesson I learned is one side of the bag has texture, and the texture is what creates a little bit of separation between the sides and allows it to suck flat. Right. Well, Because otherwise you end up with the air pockets. Yeah. I made the mistake of putting my tobacco with the label facing the textured side. Mm -hmm. So you can't see that as well. But we're going to cut this open today. And this is actually a pretty special tobacco. And, and, and we're going to smoke this, and I'm going to seal this and put it away for a long, long time. What this is, is a, um, a bag that was given to me, ah, dang it, I guess I'm using a new bag. I think I cut too much away there. Here you go. This was given to me on my last visit to California, where I got to spend some time with my buddy, uh, Joshua Zanger. Josh is the guy who made on the Aristocob channel several years ago in a video contest that I did, he made that brilliant video on the history of the maple pipe. Okay. Remember during the drought, Missouri Mearsham made mm -hmm. some larger pipes out of maple. We, we marketed them as the Woody pipe. And uh, no longer available, but he made that video. Just so clever. Yeah. And I got to hang out with him several times out in California. He now lives in Portland, and so someday. But He's the one that suggested on, the, on that first visit that we met that I should go over to a place called Ed's Custom Tobacco, um, Ed's Tobacco Shop. Turns out Ed's Tobacco Shop is the very first tinderbox. 
Okay, wow. so it started, they are, they're the ones that came up with the brand name Tinderbox, and they were the only location that wasn't managed by a fran or part of a franchise. Oh, franchise. They were the original. I say all that, they closed recently. Wow. Completely gone for good. And so this, on my last visit to California, Josh gave me this packet, um, knowing it, would, it was going to be the last I would ever receive. Hmm. So we're going to enjoy this, and then we're going to put it in the Disney vault. That, that doesn't exist. You know that, right? The Disney vault? What are you talking about? Of course it does. No, it, it's not. Everything I've heard, it exists. It's not really, really a vault. It's just a scarcity tactic. <laughs> You can still get it on Amazon. So this this thing that we could easily produce, we're going to not to. We're, we're going to choose not to produce it. Yeah. Makes it more valuable. Sure. It's like the McRib. <laughs> I, was just, <laughs> I was just thinking McRib. Or Szechuan sauce for fans of Rick and Morty. McDonald's has a new sauce. Do they? they? Yeah. It's a sriracha mac sauce hmm. that they're adding to a chicken sandwich, but you can also get it for nuggets. It is delightful. Hmm. It is delightful. I'm not a big fan of their Big Mac sauce, uh, but add a little bit of sriracha. I'm also not a big fan of sriracha. Add, mix the two together. It is a delight. What makes it a Mac sauce? It's a sauce that they put on the Big Mac. So kind so of like Thousand like pickly Island. Thousand Island pickle with sriracha on it. In it, it's very good. It's very good. So I thought about maybe bringing this food saver over here, and that we could talk about it and use it. But I have no real experience with it. I don't. I don't like talking about stuff I don't have any experience with. Well, I, I do anyway. <laughs> Speaking of experience, but, my but we'll do some. We'll do something as we get some experience. My first batch of uh, kombucha. kombucha was a dud. Mm. I don't. I don't think. I think that. I don't think I had enough starter in it, and so I don't think it produced as well. It wasn't as um, sour as it needed to be. So hmm. letting it. Letting batch number two ferment a little bit longer, and and I'll I'll proceed. I uh, bought again. three different bottles of kombucha, mm -hmm. just four bottles. I thought, thinking I would get ahead of this and try it, um, and see if there was anything to it. Okay, I will say this: I got three different flavors. I bought two different flavors on my first trip. I got it at Walmart, at Walmart Market. Mm. Um, they have it over where they have their fresh vegetables and things, okay. fresh fruits yeah. and vegetable juices. And I tried two of them I didn't care for, I mean not in the least. And then somebody commented how they liked the mango flavor. Mm -hmm. And so I went back, and they didn't have the mango flavor, but they had something that was probably more fruity than what I had been getting. I think what I got before was probably more um, like lemonade. -y. Oriental, right? Because it had ginger in it. Ginger, yeah, the other two had a lot of ginger in it. And so the third one, by the time I was drinking the third one, I had kind of already started to get used to that, mm -hmm. that vinegary, acidic mm -hmm. taste. And so it wasn't so bad. Um, I, I don't know that I would crave it, but maybe after a couple dozen of them, I would begin to crave yeah. it. But interesting stuff. Yeah, we'll see. If, once, I, once I get it figured out, we'll talk about it some more. But Interesting, uh, it didn't come out well. Yeah, uh, but you know what? The girl, the great thing about it is it doesn't take long to do, and it's difficult to screw up. I mean, it's it, it's easier to take care of than goldfish or sea monkeys. So how are you gonna do this with the traveling that you're doing? It's fine. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, my plan is to get a pickle jar like I talked about in the previous video, and have a second jar, and and have one. Strictly as a what they call a SCOBY hotel, which is just a place for the SCOBY to live, to grow, to be happy. Um, and so once that's done, then it's just a, just a matter of taking um, uh, two cups out of that for every new batch. And so the other jar will contain fresh batches that I'll make. And uh, you know, the window it's a week of fermentation, uh, a week to ten days of fermentation, and then two to four days of bottling after that hmm. and so you know i travel some but it's not that much and uh you, you can know, play if, it, if it comes a to bit. it yeah because i because it's pretty pretty set in stone so you know if i do the fermentation uh, on a weekend 
that I've got a week and then I do the bottling later. I think that maybe what happened with this first batch, so one of the things I would like to get is a pH reader because that lets you know if you're on the right track. Um, I think I bottled too early. I just don't think it had enough time to mature. It was, it was a little bit more than a week, but because it was a brand new batch in a much larger jar than it came from, I think that that played into it. So we'll see, we'll see what will happen. I tonight had my last my last session of a Dale Carnegie class. It's been an eight week long course. Um, technically, I have to make up a session because I missed two. You, you can miss one in the eight weeks, so I'll be doing that in about a month and a half. But um, I just wanted to talk real briefly about it. Yeah. Uh, um, mention that if you're somebody who um, if you're somebody who is, struggles with communicating, especially in the workplace, if you are someone who uh, is interested in getting a promotion that may involve public speaking and that's something uncomfortable to you, or if you are someone who, who other people have told you that you might be hard to get along with, or hard to might be, with. be stubborn, or uh, someone who would say about yourself that you're always right and other people uh, are wrong more mm -hmm. often than not. Uh, I would highly recommend taking the Dale Carnegie course. Um, there's probably one what near it you. What's called? It's just go to Dale Carnegie. I think it's DaleCarnegie.com, but it is the How to Win Friends and Influence People course. It may not even be that. It's just the Dale Carnegie training. Do they um, use the book as part of the They term? use, yeah. So, so your tuition gets you copies of the How to Win Friends and Influence People book. The majority of the classes and the training comes from those books. So within the book, there are 30 principles of uh, relationships. And so there are nine relationship, uh, friendship principles. Um, there are uh, 13 principles related to, um, related to influencing people. And then there are uh, nine principles related to um, leading people. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you end up doing throughout the, the course. You learn those, you apply those, you, uh, every single week you give a two, one, at least one, if not multiple, two minute uh, speech um, relating to a way that you have applied the principles mm -hmm. uh, and what you're learning. So what was the best thing, best experience, or you know, if you were to, if you were to share with us <clears throat> something that was memorable and useful? Uh, so it was an interesting situation for me because I've grown up with a lot of this material. And so um, it was... What do you mean by that? Uh, having read the books at an earlier age and many times, um, grown up around outgoing parents and in situations where I've had to, to engage with people. Um, and then also going through seminary and uh, being a teacher's assistant, working in, as, as a substitute teacher, working at camp. I've had a lot of opportunities to meet people, to get to engage with people, mm -hmm. and to uh, get to present in front of people. And so um, I think that I was, in a group of 15, easily the most comfortable person with the, the class material at the, the get-go. Um, and so, you know, for me, the experience really was uh, great getting to help others um, improve. But then, uh, for me personally, the, the two biggest things that I've taken away, when I started the class, I wanted to focus on being able to communicate more clearly. Um, there are times, especially in conversation, where my words and where my, where my mouth and my brain get into combat and I'm either speaking before I've had a time to think or uh, thinking uh, too long and words aren't coming out. And so um, it's, it's helped. I, you know, I have the issue where I will share something that I've thought about, but I don't give the full parameters yes. So it almost as if I'm drawing a conclusion for facts that aren't in evidence, but they're not in evidence because I just didn't bother to share. And that's yeah. something that I think a lot of folks do. Because you, you get that, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? Do you hear that from people? Yeah, <laughs> yeah and so that's, that, that I think it's the, 
one of the two sides of that is uh, either I'm, I start talking and I'm not sure where I'm going with something, or um, I am talking just fine, but I am three steps ahead in the conversation than where the other person is. Right. Um, and so for me, uh, having having the tools to address some of the relational situations is great, but many of those things are things that I already apply in relationships. But it's just been a, a solid reminder for me to take an extra beat and take an extra breath when I catch myself uh, kind of getting off rails in a conversation. You know, my, my presentation tonight uh, about what I got out of the class most, uh, I mentioned that um, in those situations where my brain and my mouth aren't working in cooperation, eventually, I'll communicate, but I feel like a doofus because the communication is not clear and it's not concise. Um, so taking just a moment to clear your thoughts, realign your thoughts with your mouth, um, and communicate clearly uh, is better for you because you don't feel like a doofus, and it's better for the other person because they're going to understand more quickly. And so that was a good benefit. The other for me was... Uh, one of the things that they focus on is dealing with stress, dealing with anxiety, and dealing with um, self-consciousness a little bit. And I feel often that I have faked my way into my position. Uh, it just it is very uh, feels very random how I have ended up where I am. And so um, there is I often deal with self-doubt and. Uh, uh, feeling as if I'm going to be found out to be a fake, <laughs> a fraud. Um, and so recognizing that those feelings are not uh, beneficial and they're not well-founded because I've, I've been chosen. And now almost a year into the position, they haven't uh, taken me into a back room and old yellered me yet. So, um, you know, remembering that uh, helps with those. And so that, that's something that came from the course. That's good. So I, I highly recommend it. It's expensive. It's like seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, but uh, and so one of the things they focus on is a project. You get a project that you then uh, work through throughout the course, and you uh, you it's, it's called the return on investment project. And so uh, at the end, you'll report on it, and that report goes back to your uh, manager or your business if they've sponsored you mm. to take the course. Um, so I can tell you, a lot of the people in the class have have benefited greatly. Um, in fact, several of them have, have received promotions. Um, I, I was just going to say, as you think about how much that cost, think about the payback, how how yeah. much better off would you be with a couple years of a promotion under your mm -hmm. belt? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, sure. And I know as you go for your year-end or mid-year reviews and your boss is you know, asking you about, you know, what are you doing to better yourself, they want to hear that you're reading this reading books and authors that are a applicable to their business or that you're taking courses. And Dale Carnegie is so well regarded in business that uh, it's a good good endorsement. Yeah. Well, let's wrap this up. Yes. Um, we are, as I said, going to film next week from somewhere. We ought to try to get over to a uh, low country cigar and tobacco place if we can. Also known as what? Smokingpipes.com? I don't know. I don't know. That that sounds great. We will certain we will try to do that. I'm not optimistic uh, <laughs> because I know how to ma how many children our wives will be dealing with if we do that. You know what? Remember they're but doing they're doing that two hour I know, trip that dolphin to see thing, the dolphins, the reciprocity, and, and the, the little babies that we'll be watching would love to go to Low Country. Oh my gosh, no, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> but yeah, we we will definitely be filming at the beach, and um, you know maybe maybe we'll find someplace interesting to, to shoot a video or two. But I think that's it for tonight. That's it. All right. No, right. this morning. Whatever. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time. And uh, what, what should we prompt them? We need, we, we're we're going to give you a prompt so that you'll leave us a note below. Why aren't you leaving messages? Please leave that in the space below. <laughs> Make it a great week. See you guys.